Welcome back to the channel. I'd first like to thank those who contributed in the comments section of the last video in trying to solve the copper zinc capacitor sandwich puzzle. There's a lot of interesting possibilities put out there and from some very sharp minds and I was kind of impressed. One lead that I started to follow was the one where maybe the measurements of the diameter of the wires were different. They weren't the same and it would be causing a capacitance imbalance. And I'll try to explain that a little bit. If you haven't seen the last video, I would suggest that maybe you watch that first so you can kind of understand what I'm talking about. This is a previous cutaway diagram of what I had where you got the copper and zinc sandwiched in between two plates. And the observation is that you got capacitors inside a capacitor. So I drew it up a little bit bigger to try to get a better view of what's happening. The inner plate that I have drawn in here will be the, the aluminum tape that's right on the pipe. And then we got the copper and zinc wire wrapped around it. And this is the outer plate right here I'm calling. Now with each of these wires, there's capacitance between the outer plate and the wire and the inner plate and the wire. The same over here. And the voltage is appearing in between them. And this is a little bit of capacitance too. The schematic would look kind of like this, where we have two capacitors in the series here, two in the series here, and we're noticing a charge right here in between them. And with these capacitors in the series, it divides the voltage that you see here in between these. Now, if the capacitance of each of these capacitors were exactly equal, you wouldn't notice any voltage in here. And the same here, if the capacitance here, these four points were all exactly the same, we wouldn't notice a voltage in between here. And what was brought into question was the sizes of these wires, were they exactly the same? Because if one was bigger than the other, the capacitance of these four points weren't, wouldn't be equal. And so what I did is I measured the zinc wire and the copper wire, and I found out that the zinc wire was a little bit bigger than the copper wire. It was about two or three hundredths of a millimeter bigger. And when I checked the capacitance at each of these four points, I found out there was a variation, that one was least 10% less than these other ones. It might have been a little bit more. I checked it with a my capacitance meter here. So what I did to try to remedy the problem is I took some zinc wire off of the coil. I took the coil and I took maybe a little bit more than one turn out and I used the capacitance meter to try to balance these as close as I could. And I got it within one or two percent of each other before it was out. And then I tested out again and I found that the voltages were pretty similar to as before when the capacitance was more out of balance. The current was less, I imagine, because I took some zinc wire out, but the voltages were pretty similar. And sometimes during the day, the voltages were actually higher than when they were before, when they were more out of balance. It's almost up to five volts. And I would continually test the capacitance here. I was also checking the line voltage. I thought maybe that was really changing. And when I tried to balance these, the inner capacitance between here always were pretty much the same. They didn't seem to vary. The capacitance out here are the ones that changed. And the one that changed most out here was between the zinc wire and the outer plate. This is the one that always seems to change for some reason. And I would try to readjust it, set them to where they're pretty much balanced, and I'd check the then I would test it again and it would always come back while there's still voltages. And when I started testing the voltages throughout the day, I noticed that the room temperature was different. And that seemed to be correlating to the different voltages. When it was warmer, I get the higher voltage. 
And this capacitance here is the one that always seemed to little, be a little bit off. So what I think was causing that, the temperatures were causing expansion in these wires and there'd be a little bit more pressure here between the aluminum outer plate and the zinc than over here. These pretty much stayed balanced. But this one right here, so I'm thinking the zinc wire was expanding more and causing more pressure against the aluminum plates up here. And that's what I think is happening here. I think heat is expanding the zinc wire more than the copper and increasing the pressure up here against the outer plate, increasing the contact surface and changing the capacitance. So I think it's pressure that's doing it. And I think it's heat from the room. I'm not sure if it, the resistance of the zinc wire would have anything to do with it. I think it's mostly the room temperature that's changing. I found that it's nearly impossible to keep these balanced out just because it's changing all the time. So that's what I think is going on right here. Uh, some commenters suggested that I try the big copper wire over here with a smaller copper wire and you'll see a difference. Well, I, I knew that beforehand. I did try two copper wires of the same size and I did pick up a little bit of voltage, but it's easier to maintain these uh, balances out on the capacitance because it's the same material. I'm uncertain yet why when I shorted these out, the zinc and the copper out, that it didn't change the input current. Um, somebody probably knows what the answer is, but <laughs> I don't know. I haven't wrapped my head around that yet. I think this is acting like a step-down transformer. And I think if you had like four variable capacitors up here, you could probably vary them to pick up many different voltages, well, less than the input. But because I think this is acting like a step-down transformer. And the way it is right now, I think the variations in heat changes the pressure and changes the surface contact. And that's why it's so hard to balance these out because they keep changing. So I think this the way it is right now is acting like a step-down transformer. Small differences in sizes and pressures would explain a lot when they're changing the capacitance just that little bit. That would explain a lot from the past too, like when I used these plates. Now if I used just two copper plates, I'm sure they're from the same stock, they're exact same size. If I place these in between two other plates to make like capacitors in the series, two sets of capacitors in the series, I wouldn't get anything. I might get just a little touch of voltage, but I really wouldn't get anything. And the same if I used two pieces of zinc. These are both the same and probably from the same stock. And if I would put these in between two plates, I really wouldn't get anything either. But when I put a zinc and a copper together, they are the same size. Um, I mean the same surface area, but I noticed taking a closer look, this zinc is just a hair thicker than the copper. So if I put these in between two other plates of a homemade capacitor, the pressure would have been equal. There'd probably been more pressure on the contact surfaces of the zinc than the copper. So I guess that would probably explain it too. And it probably explained for the other metals that I use too, because I was always using the copper and a different element from, you know, maybe just a hair different in thickness. It was changing the contact pressure and changing the capacitance a little bit. I think that would explain it. One other thing I want to review from my past is my zinc copper antenna. So I'm going to put something together and I'm going to go outside and I'm going to test something like that now. What I have set up outside now is a zinc copper antenna. It's a zinc wire twisted and taped together with an insulated 14 gauge copper wire. Over on the wind turbine it's connected to a portion of the insulator and over here it's attached to another one. And it comes down, this is the 
the woodshed and we got it connected here up and I'm gonna see what kind of voltage and charge we can get off of this the first thing I'll do I'll test the measurement on these wires because they're probably different this is supposed to be 14 gauge wire and you got 1.689 millimeters and over here zinc wire looks like you got 1.4748 the hand that's freezing and then we'll test the voltage on here too I'm going to try to test the voltage with one hand and I want to touch the wood now there's no ground involved here this is just between the zinc and the copper I just got it, the connector there coming down and this is going to be just a teeny tiny current if it was connected to the ground it would be a whole lot more but I'm not sure how much this is voltage AC but I'm not sure how much we can trust the, the like this because look what happens when I it changes just by me touching this connector over here so I'm not sure how much I can trust this AC so I think what I'm going to do I'm going to run this through a bridge rectifier and into capacitor and charge it up but no ground involved so now I just connected up a, a bridge rectifier and a capacitor to charge and then we'll see what it'll charge up to Let's test it right away it's charging I'll leave this for a while to see what it comes up to well it's been about a half hour and I'll test her again yeah it's over it's over 1.3 volts sorry about this wind again I have tested the frequency that is picking up and it's just 60 cycle AC so I'm sure it's just picking up a signal from the transmission lines that are about 200 feet or so away so it's nothing magical it's interesting that there's no ground connected to this at all it's even the capacitor in the bridge rectifier just floating there without touching anything so there's no ground and it's not touching anything except porcelain well I'm back out for another test it's been a little over an hour now since I connected this up wires situated DC voltage, I don't know why that meter won't settle down to zero. There we go. One point seven six volts. Again, that's no ground. It's just touching the porcelain insulators. What I want to do is get a comparison with copper, copper with no ground. So I'm going to set something up like that now. Cloudy now, it almost looks like it could snow, but it's supposed to clear up, I think. So I'll be back. Well, the voltage was still climbing, so I want to try, test it one more time, the zinc copper, before I try something else. It's kind of fun. So it's slowing down now. Looks like it almost stopped. One point eight six volts. Okay, I'll get to something else. The wire that I have stretched out here now is some uh, Romex, or it's a fourteen two with ground building wire. And I've had this set up here for about six hours now, charging, and I have two of the conductors combined together and just one so it's off balanced in the amount of wire 
between one side and the other and I got it charging up a capacitor and I'll it's been out here about six hours I think right now I'll see what it's charged up to now and this will be voltage DC I get to keep apologizing for the wind noises yeah, it looks like you had 1.3 volts around there a little bit more I left that copper house wire antenna up there longer just because it was rising slower, but I think it came to the end. I'm not sure how much more the zinc copper one would have rose up in voltage. It probably went a little bit further. I'll probably stick it back out there again just to see what it'll rise up to. I'm sure all the watchers out there noticed that the zinc was bare and exposed to the air. So that might have had something to do with the higher voltages on that one. I'm not, it could be, I'm not sure, but I think it was interesting that both of the antennas built up a charge without any ground at all. So I learned a lot with these experiments and all the information provided by the commenters in the other video. I like to thank them again. And there was mention of things I never even heard of before, like a field sampling capacitor, or cold current electricity. I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds pretty interesting. But I'm going to bring this video to a close, and I'll thank you again for your time.